Hey everyone, welcome back to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith and this is... Luke Smith, and we're here to continue our playthrough of Mansion of Madness 2nd Edition. Now if you've been watching as these episodes have been coming out, you might have noticed there was a little bit of a break between this episode and the last one. It's because we've been having our own mythos phase here at the yes. Smith House. <laughs> there was a little bit of a snowstorm and a power outage and it delayed yep. things, but we're back, we're ready to continue. Of course, if you're watching this all after the fact, you've noticed no break at all, and you're ready to go back to the table. <laughs> and so are we. We got a suggestion from Roman Pezelef, which got the most votes. Oh. So let's find out what he wants us to do. I'm so sick of these weirdos in their strange dresses. Said William as he raised the fire extinguisher threateningly. I think it's time to rearrange your wardrobe. So Roman wants us to start by having William perform an attack action. William's muscles tense as he throws his weight into his swing. So Luke, we have to test his strength, which is four. Why don't you go ahead and roll the dice? Well, how do you like that? <laughs> I like it quite a bit, Luke. That's two successes, plus an almost success. We only needed two to pass. And we're told the monster suffers damage equal to the weapon's damage, plus your test result. Then we move the monster one space, which is very unfortunate because we don't have a ranged weapon, so we'd be forced to move after it to try to attack again, and we wouldn't have the extra action to attack with. But it doesn't matter because we killed it. You're right, our damage is two, and we did another damage of two for a total of four. This cultist has been defeated, and that means William, off of his character's ability, will gain a clue token. I think I'm doing pretty good on my own. Wait, am I alone? Weren't there others with me? An old man and a woman? I need to clear my mind. William draws on a power he does not know the source of. And for his second action, Roman wants him to use the Feed the Mind spell. With this, William or another investigator within range can become focused. And William is going to use this on himself. So we'll place this focus condition beside his character and then flip this spell over. For an instant, William feels his mind touch the minds of his companions. Which is kind of funny because from this little story that Luke and I are weaving here, William is sort of losing his memory. But through casting this spell, the fluff text here, totally coincidentally, fits right into that. And William is once again reminded of his companions. Right. Harvey and Min. Yeah, I remember. They're both in this mansion too. Unfortunately, William needs to test his lore, which is three. And we need three successes to pass. So my odds are not very good, but let's see what I can do. Well, not much. Only one success? I'm afraid so, Luke. William recoils in revulsion. And we're told that he now suffers one face-down horror. And then this spell will be shuffled back into his Feed the Mind deck. William was suffering the day's condition, and this is removed at the end of his turn. So now we'll move on to Min. Min stands transfixed, holding the key in her hand, almost unable to move, when suddenly she sees a small white rabbit hopping in circles around the library. What am I seeing? What does it want? The rabbit moves quickly and bounces through the library door as if it were a ghost. It's leading me. It's leading me where I need to go. Min exits the library and in her rush, she runs straight into William. Min, where are you going? Oh, William, did you see a rabbit? Min realizes how foolish she sounds as she asks the question. There is no rabbit, Min. Do you feel all right? You look shaken. As if seeing her friend has brought her back to her senses, Min says aloud, William, I, I don't know what it is. It's this house. I, I just haven't been myself. I know what you mean. I felt the same way. Of course there was no rabbit. I must do something to separate this fiction from reality. In a low voice so William can't hear, Min recites the spell that she found earlier. So as her second action, Roman wants Min to use the Instill Bravery spell. This will allow her to discard one horror, and Roman thought we should get rid of those hampering hallucinations, so that's what we'll remove. Now we'll flip the spell over and resolve its other side. As Min finishes the spell, her body is racked with painful coughing, and we're told she needs to test her lore, which is three, and she needs two successes. Luke, I don't want to put too much pressure on you, but I think it's important that we succeed here. No problemo. All right. <laughs> no problem, I was right. Oh, boom. <laughs> that was an understatement. Total success. Which is great because it means there's no additional effect. Otherwise, we would have had to suffer one face down damage. And that ends Min's turn. Something isn't right. I can feel it in my old bones. Moving faster than you might expect from an older gentleman, Harvey bounds from the office through the library and into the hallway. Ah, good, you're both here. I worry we're running out of time. Come with me and quickly. But Harvey moves so fast they can't even keep up with him. And that ends the investigator's phase. 
As we enter the mythos phase, we're told that when the scream begins, the investigators believe it to be a human being crying out in fear. But by the time the last echoes die, they can only conclude it is some sort of wild beast far closer than they would like. And we're told each investigator suffers one face down horror, which I'll distribute to them now. Well, aside from each investigator taking an additional horror, I feel like we got off of the hook pretty easy on that yes, mythos phase, really. Did. It could have been worse. We didn't get any new monsters to fight or no. slow us down. We got nothing but the hallway ahead of us, which is important, right? Because we are running out of time. I we need to go. I think so. I, I have a feeling whatever nefarious schemes that these cultists are up to, they're not going to give us all no. the time in the world to, to track them down and find them. Yeah. So it looks like there's only really one direction to go, but we do have two doors. Yeah. So which one do we explore? I guess we'll be turning that over yeah. to you guys to help us decide. In the comments below, let us know what you want us to do. If you like what someone says, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like it, then propose your own suggestion. Maybe someone will vote for that. Whichever one gets the most votes, that's what we'll come back and do. But until the next episode, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching.